Hello, in this video we're going to talk about when is the best time to photograph the Milky Way on the night sky, why is it seasonal, how your latitude comes into play and what kind of shots can you get in various parts of the Milky Way season. So first let's clear out why is it that in certain parts of the year shooting the Milky Way is just simply not possible. It's not like during those months the Milky Way is below the horizon so you cannot see it. If you're on the same part of the earth pretty much Milky Way will be rising and setting and looking pretty much similar way on the night sky for you on the same location on Earth. But what changes is the relative position of the Milky Way with regards to the Sun, which means that the Milky Way will be rising and setting at different parts of the day. And that's why in certain months of the year Milky Way is just simply not above the horizon during the dark night when you can photograph it. So let's take a look at Stellarium. This is a desktop app that is perfect for simulating different conditions and the behavior of celestial bodies. This is a completely free app. It works in every operating system. System. I will leave some links down below in the description if you want to check it out. I highly, highly recommend it. So first, let's take a look at what happens during the worst possible time of year to photograph the Milky Way, which in my location, which by the way is Poland, uh, like middle Europe, is 26th of December, which is like the day after the Christmas day. So let's see what happens then. Okay, so as you can see, we have a simulation of the situation right here. My target here in Stellarium is the Sagittarius A star, which is the center of the Milky Way. And right here, as you can see, we we have the Sun which pretty much lines up with the Milky Way and right here we have the ground and you might think okay so what's the problem I'm seeing the Milky Way here but obviously the Sun is in the way and the only reason why you are seeing it like this in this app is because I have turned off the atmosphere and if I turn it on right here as you can see Obviously, it's the middle of the day. It's like uh, half past 10 in the morning. So obviously, during that time, it is simply not possible to photograph the Milky Way. So for now, let's turn off the atmosphere. And also, we can turn off the ground so we can see better what is happening. And using this control right here, I can simulate different times. So let's just move forwards days by days. And as you can see, the sun is separating from the Milky Way. They are getting further and further and further apart. And at some point, because they are getting further apart, the Milky Way will be rising before the dark night ends. Before the sun rises, the Milky Way will rise. And if the Milky Way rises, if the core of the Milky Way is going to rise above the horizon while we still have an astronomical night, that is the start of the Milky Way season. So what is an astronomical night, you may ask? Well, it's the part of the night which is a truly dark night, which makes you possible to photograph the night sky. When the sun is setting, first you have a Civil twilight, which is when the sun's position above the horizon, actually below the horizon, is between 0 and minus 6 degrees. Then when the position of the sun is between minus 6 and minus 12 degrees below the horizon, then you have the nautical twilight, then between minus 12 and minus 18 you have an astronomical twilight, and then when the sun is further deep down below the horizon, below minus 18 degrees, that's where you have an astronomical night. And the Milky Way season begins where the core of the Milky Way is rising above the horizon while the Sun is still below minus 18 degrees below the horizon before the astronomical night ends. And from that day on, as the days pass throughout the year, the Milky Way and the Sun will be getting further and further apart, which means that the Milky Way will be rising earlier and earlier and earlier. And sometime around April is actually my favorite time to photograph the Milky Way. But let's see how it lines up in the night sky and Stellarium. And right here we have one of those compositions. As you can see, the current date and time is uh, 12th of April. We have 3.30 a.m. in the morning and the Milky Way looks like this. It is positioned kind of diagonally across the sky. This is the core of the Milky Way, which is above the horizon. We are still during the astronomical night. And also here on the right hand side, you have Antares with the row of Yuki star complex, which is just a beautiful star complex to photograph, so I definitely appreciate that it is also on the night sky along with the Milky Way. And this kind of composition is my favorite because the Milky Way is kind of diagonally across the sky, which means that I can shoot really, really wide and still the Milky Way is filling my frame. I can show the epic landscapes, etc. This is absolutely my favorite time of year to photograph the Milky Way, but there are some trade-offs. One of them being that you have to be photographing it very, very early in the morning, like you can see here, 3.30 AM, something like this. So you basically have to pull out an all-nighter in order to be able to photograph the Milky Way. And during that time, like March, April, it is still pretty cold and the nights are cold. So you're gonna have to be standing out there in the middle of the cold very early in the morning. Probably you have been waiting all night or maybe you went to sleep and then woke up at 
some 2 a.m. or something like this, and you're going to be driving like a zombie into your location to photograph the Milky Way. But in my opinion, it is worth it because it fills the entire night sky. And if you want to shoot like a panorama or something like this, now it's the best time to shoot a panorama because the Milky Way is diagonally, so you don't have to cover a lot of the azimuth in order to be able to have the entire arc in your shot. And thus, again, it is easier to pull off such a panorama. And also the Milky Way will be filling the entire panorama way, way better and looking more prominent on the night sky. So how does your latitude actually affect how the Milky Way is positioned on the night sky? Well, the perfect rule of thumb is that the lower your latitude, so the closer you are to the equator, then the Milky Way will be higher above the horizon. So your Milky Way season actually may start earlier than for people on higher latitudes. So let's see how it looks in Stellarium. So if I position my mouse right here, I can actually select my uh, location and I can click here using this arrow to kind of change how the night sky will look over my horizon. So if I go down, as you can see, the Milky Way rises higher. For instance, the Canary Islands, Tenerife, and this kind of locations are just perfect to photograph the night sky because as you can see, the Milky Way is just high above the horizon. Maybe you can actually tweak the hour a little bit. As you can see, the entire night sky is just filled with Milky Way and it is perfect. And also Canary Islands are perfect because they are in a place with low light pollution. So if you can go to Tenerife, well, maybe not right now in the pandemic, but I can definitely recommend this location for Milky Way photography. This is literally one of the best places to go and photograph the Milky Way. But on the other hand, if we go north, for instance, let's go to Iceland. As you can see, the core of the Milky Way, this circle right here, which is actually targeted around the core of the Milky Way, it is below the horizon. And Iceland is actually in high enough latitude that no matter the time of the year, as you can see, if I advance here, it is kind of trying to rise above the horizon. We have May, we have June, but it never does. It never rises above the horizon. As you can see, it just stays below the horizon, no matter which, let's turn off the atmosphere right here, no matter what time of year, it is still, still below the horizon. So bad news for Icelanders, they cannot photograph the core of the Milky Way any time of the year. But you know, they shouldn't feel bad because they have other beautiful spectacles on the night sky like the Northern Lights. So it's only fair that they don't see the core of the Milky Way if they have something like the Northern Lights, right? So anyway, as the year progresses, the Milky Way is going to rise earlier and earlier and earlier, making it somewhat more accessible to photograph. But at some point during the summer solstice, there can actually happen a phenomenon called the white nights. And in order to understand what are white nights and how they affect your ability to photograph the Milky Way, let's actually draw it out on a piece of paper so you can better understand it. All right, so let me draw out a trajectory of the sun, the elevation angle of the sun as the time passes on the sky. So it goes like this. From the highest position, it goes like this. Down, the bottommost position, and then up again. This is how the time is passing. And this is the position, this is the elevation angle of the sun on the sky. And depending on what part of the year is, your horizon, which is a flat line like this, may be positioned at a different portion of this trajectory. For instance, during an equinox, your horizon is going to be laying just in the middle of this trajectory, so you have the equal portion of the day and the equal portion of night, which means that the length of the day and the length of the night are equal, which is the definition of the equinox. However, as you are going closer and closer to the summer solstice, the position of your horizon is going to go further down below here. And during the actual summer solstice, the position of the horizon with regards to the trajectory of the sun, it's going to have its lowest position. So something like this. And as you can see, the portion of the trajectory when the sun is above the horizon is very, very long because you have the longest day of the year. And then the night is the shortest because the part of the trajectory below the horizon is very, very short. And depending on your latitude, it may happen that around the summer solstice, the position of the sun actually doesn't go below minus 18 degrees. So remember when I was talking about the astronomical night, you need the astronomical night to be able to shoot the Milky Way. And if the position of the sun doesn't go below minus 18 degrees, let's assume that here is minus 18. If it doesn't go below minus 18 degrees, then it never gets dark enough for you to be able to photograph the night sky. There is no astronomical night. You just have day, then you have sunset, then you have some twilights, and then you have sunrise, and then you have your day again without any portion of the night to be truly dark, which means it's not possible to photograph the night sky during that time, and those nights are called white nights. 
And a fun fact is that if your latitude is high enough, for instance, if you are in the polar regions, then your horizon during a summer solstice will reach a level that looks something like this, which means that the sun is trying to set, but it actually never does. And this is a polar day. And a similar situation happens during a winter solstice when your horizon is somewhere right here. So the sun never reaches a level above the horizon and that is your polar night. So during those white nights, and again, when it starts, when it ends, if it happens at all, really really depends on your latitude so you'll just have to check it for yourself but during that time you're not going to be shooting the milky way but don't worry there are other things that you can shoot other interesting things like for instance the noctilus and clouds which is a marvelous spectacle on the night sky and i will be making a separate video about that very soon probably so yeah it's maybe a good time to subscribe to my channel down below if you haven't already you know just saying so then as the year progresses the white nights will finally end and there you will have your second part of the milky way season and that is actually the perfect time for beginners i might say because in that period of time shortly after sunset after the astronomical night begins the milky way is already up in the sky the core of the milky way is already visible you can start shooting then it's like august september so there are you know summer nights very warm nights it is easy to just go after sunset and just gaze on the on the night sky maybe set up a camera and try to photograph something you know play with it and if you're a beginner this is the time that i would recommend for you to try to shoot the milky way but this is actually not my favorite time to do that and that is simply because the milky way is positioned straight up into the sky let me actually show you that in stellarium so right here we have the uh, 7th of august right in my location in poland and as you can see we have uh, you know 11 p.m so this is a very reasonable hour to go out and photograph the night sky you don't have to pull out an all-nighter and then the milky way is just positioned straight up in the night sky there is no antares there is no row of yuki anymore it is below the horizon but the core of the milky way is up here so you can photograph it but because it is straight up into the sky it doesn't occupy as much space on the night sky as it would during the spring months and that is because i don't really like to shoot the milky way during that time because i don't want to have huge negative space of just regular stars and no milky way i want the milky way to fill my entire frame so in order to do that i would need to use some tighter lenses like a 24 35 maybe even a 50 millimeter in order to punch in on the milky way but the upside of that part of the season is that you can do it earlier during the night you don't have to stay up all night and those months are typically warmer so it is a nice experience to just sit back on a portable chair or something and just gaze into the night sky and as the year progresses the milky way is going to set sooner and sooner and sooner so it happens like the astronomical night starts and then after some times the milky way will set and as the year progresses you know september october the milky way set time is going to be earlier and earlier and earlier and at some point the milky way the core of the milky way will set before the astronomical night will start and that is the end of the milky way season and then again it will be happening earlier and earlier and earlier and at some point in december during that around the winter solstice the milky way will line up with the sun and that completes our yearly cycle so just to recap here i know it's a long video but we are getting to the end very very soon i promise you so to recap the milky way season starts somewhere early like january february before that it is not possible to photograph it because it lines up with the sun so it is up in the sky when the sun is which means it's impossible to photograph it because the sun is overwhelming the sky obviously then when the season starts the milky way will be possible to photograph right before the dawn and then it will be happening earlier and earlier and during that period of time the milky way is going to be diagonally across the night sky perfect for very wide angle shots but bear in mind that you will have to stay up all night because the chance to photograph the core of the milky way will be happening very very late into the night then depending on your latitude you may or may not have the white night so you just have to wait it out photograph something else during that time like noctilus and clouds like i mentioned and then in the second part of the season you can photograph the milky way at much more convenient hours like 11 pm or something like this right after sunset when the astronomical night starts the milky way will be already up in the sky it will be straight up into the sky which means that it 
it doesn't occupy the same space on the night sky as before so you would have to shoot with tighter lenses or just accept the fact that you don't have the Milky Way covering the entire sky and also if you want to do like panorama of the Milky Way or something like this it is going to be more difficult because you will have to cover more ground use a even wider lens for the panorama and actually I have a full video actually two videos how to shoot and how to process panorama of the Milky Way in September so in the tougher conditions for a panorama I will highly recommend you watch those videos they will be linked down below in the description and also the last thing of course you need to take into account the lunar cycle because every month you have the moon that is going through its phases you know new moon then full moon and during full moon the moon is up in the sky which again overwhelms the night sky and typically it is not recommended to shoot the night sky during a full moon so you would have to pick some days around the new moon where the new moon is following the sun which means that it's out of the way during the dark astronomical night for you to capture beautiful night sky so that's basically it for me like i said check out these two videos if you want to learn more tricks about milky way photography don't forget to subscribe to my channel it will be worth it i have a lot of stuff planned for 2021 give this video also a like i would really appreciate it and hopefully you find it helpful see you next time bye bye